this video, the Center for E-Learning, Didactics, and Educational Research at the University of Veterinary Medicine Hanover will present how to wrap an elbow high bandage on dogs and cats. Only one of the correct methods to perform this skill will be shown here. The application of a modified Robert Jones bandage is to be simulated on a dog model. The modified Robert Jones bandage can be used as a support, brace, or pressure bandage. Needed for this skills lab exercise are a pair of Lister bandage scissors, non-elastic gauze, wound dressing, 0.5 to 2 cm thick cotton padding, three cotton donuts, medical tape, self-adhesive bandage, wooden tongue depressors, breathable mesh tape, three toe spacer strips, gloves, and the simulator. In addition, a marker and shear machine are required when applying this bandage on a living animal. Preparation. First, all required materials are placed within reach. To guarantee hygienic practice, disposable gloves should always be worn when tending to wounds. The three toe spacers, as well as the cotton donuts, must be prepared beforehand. The donuts are utilized in order to protect the edge of bones from increased pressure. They therefore have to be an adequate height and diameter. The bone protuberances requiring padding on the front limb are the thumbs and dew claws, the oscopy accessorium, and the olecranon. Especially the olecranon has a high risk of developing pressure points. Therefore, the donut must be tall enough as to prevent a hand from touching the olecranon when applying pressure. The splint is also prepared in advance, built out of the tongue depressors and tape. The amount of tongue depressors required to guarantee a stable splint is dependent on the size and weight of the animal. In addition, four short and two long strips of tape are prepared. It is important that the long strips are about double the length of the distance between the lower leg and paw. Applying the modified Robert Jones bandage. Before applying the bandage, it is important that another person restrains the patient. Furthermore, the wound of a living animal must be cleansed and disinfected. This step can be ignored on the simulator. The leg is bandaged in such a way that it is fixated in an extended position, as can be seen here on the live patient. The clinical skills lab model, however, has a slight bend in the carpus, not completely permitting a full extension of the leg. When securing a fracture, both proximal and distal joints must be considered. The wound is covered in a wound dressing and is loosely wrapped with non-elastic gauze. This is then fixated with a short piece of tape. This creates the primary or contact layer. In the next step, cotton padding creates the intermediary layer. The prepared toe spacers are placed between the toes and should reach just under the carpal joint. Now, a long strip of tape is placed on the lateral and medial side of the front limb, right onto the fur. These should reach with about the same length just past the toes, allowing a fixation of the tongue depressor between them. With an overlap of 50%, the cotton padding is wrapped from distal to proximal, creating the typical roof tile pattern. The bone protuberances are protected with the prepared cotton donuts. Distally, the tips of the third and fourth toes should be sticking out from under the bandage. In total, four layers of cotton padding are wrapped over one another. The cotton is fixated proximally with a short strip of tape. Now the cotton can be wrapped under light compression with medical tape from distal to the proximal end of the bandage. To prevent the stiff medical tape from cutting off circulation at the top of the bandage, it is important to leave the top of the cotton padding free. The bandage can now be fixated by removing the tape from the wooden tongue depressor, 
turning them 180 degrees around and taping them onto the layer of medical tape. The prepared splint can now be placed below the joint of the elbow, stabilizing the leg and bandage. To create the so-called tertiary layer, the leg is wrapped from distal to proximal in a self-adhesive bandage, creating once again the roof tile pattern. While wrapping the fixating bandage, it is important to wrap it without tension, as the bandage will tighten later. Here too it is important to keep the cotton padding at the top of the bandage free. Finally, the self-adhesive bandage can be fixated with a piece of tape. Once completed, it is important to check the positioning of the bandage. Two fingers must fit within the proximal end of the bandage. However, it should not be too loose, as it could otherwise slide off. The toes should be palpable, as to notice a sliding of the bandage, as well as swelling or secretion. On a living animal, it is useful to mark the location of the wound as to protect it when removing the bandage later. This step does not need to be done on the simulator. Removing the modified Robert Jones bandage. When removing the bandage, it is important to be cautious of people's fingers. For this, the bandage is carefully opened from proximal, as far away from the wound as possible, using a Lister bandage scissor. Since the scissor will quickly blunt from cutting through cotton, and often isn't able to cut through all layers at once, it is possible to first cut through the tertiary layer and unwrap the lower layers manually. When removing the bandage from a living animal, it is important to be aware of unpleasant smells and secretion from the wound area, as well as looking at the wound coverage. The bandage and wound dressing are removed and disposed of in the bin. If bandage material is contaminated with blood or wound secretion, then it must be disposed of in the organic waste.